There he is. Hey. Mark Bry. Technophobe. <laughs> That's all right, no worries. Um, you got me got there in the end. Wow, I'm absolutely exhausted after watching that. What a game. And we all knew the outcome. Yeah, I know, it's still exciting, even when you know, isn't it? Yeah. I, I mean, 30 years ago, Chris, I've never sat down and watched that game in its entirety. I've, I mean, just, well, I, I don't think I've watched any game in its entirety. You see highlights, you see the goals, um, you go back to your memory, and, you know, some things aren't what they seemed at the, at, at the time, but um, the overriding feeling of um, relief, joy... Um, I don't know, just about everything you could feel, really. Um, and watching the pictures, the images, everyone looks so young and so slim. Um, <laughs> just great. The, 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 the fans, I suppose, you know, if you've been beaten 9-0, in, in, you know, in, in earlier in the season, I think everybody thinks if we can, if we can keep it to four or five or something, will it will, 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 will look like a good result. But as Koppel said, the day before, when we did the, the, the set pieces and ran through the shape, you know, there's a hardcore few who think we can win. We and we and we believe that we can win. You know, we have to go and do it. You know, not many people. The, the, the nation will be sitting there tuning in the first FA Cup semi-finals live, and they'll just expect us to get battered. And um, you know, it ended up being an epic game, and you know, one of the most memorable games that I think I've played in, and and just etched on the memory and just one of those you carry with you or always. I mean, everyone say, yeah, you lost the finals. Yeah, we lost the finals. So, so, so what, well, you know, we beat, we beat Liverpool and Liverpool are back then, were back then what they are now, you know, formidable. Anyway. Again, you, well, you mentioned the, we'll start there. You mentioned the 9-0, Liverpool. For those that, I mean, there's loads of people that watched the game today that weren't even alive um, <laughs> when it was on. Um, but can you just explain, like, just how good Liverpool were and what it was like in that 9-0 game playing against them? Oh, the 9-0 was horrific. Horrific September evening. We went up there. I played there before. And they kick off the game in the old days like they had 12, 13 men on the pitch. They moved the ball around really quickly and stretch you and run in behind. And, you know, I was trying to say to the players, look, be careful here. You know, I've been here with Leicester and... You know, they 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 always look like they've got extra men on the pitch. You know, there's always space and time, etc. And um, as you saw from that semi-final there, you can't tell me that Virgil Van Dijk is better than Alan Hansen. You watch Alan Hansen that game there, and he never puts a foot wrong. Really, he, he, he's on the ball, he passes it well, he drops off, he steps into midfield. He, you know, he's exceptional. I know they end up losing four three, but um, but you know, the team they had, the balance they had in the team. Um, they were an exceptional team the, the last year when they won the league so inevitably we stopped them doing the double so they were an, an exceptional team and um, they had a lot of injuries but so did we you know we had quite a few injuries you know Hoppo was missing and Alex Dyer and Wright he was missing um, Ralph Eddie might have been missing David Burke missing you know we had we, you know we, we we flipped the team as well so um, you know and then I think Steve didn't use us up did he and uh in the mm. game so Liverpool were a great team now just just as they are now they're back to where they were so to to lose 9-0 was was shameful earlier in the season but then to beat them 4-3 you know in that in that one-off game which shows to show you and and in and, and that we've continued with that sort of that thing with having a a little bit of something over Liverpool I, I think in the commentary John Motson mentioned we'd won once out of 18 attempts prior to that game and then since that game, I think we've won eleven times. You know, including you know, we did the we've done the double twice over them in in, in uh, different seasons, obviously. So, um, so yeah, it's it's always a, a game that the fans richly look forward to. I think the younger fans see that and just think, wow. But you you'd have to be around at the time to know the circumstances of both teams at that time. We were trying to stay up, and they were they were they, they were just about to win the league. So, yeah, I mean, I think Liverpool fans and the Liverpool that team are tired of hearing about it, but it was an incredible and phenomenal result in football and, you know, it sort of, like, reverberated around the country. Everyone was like, wow, how's from Liverpool? Yeah, the, the cup run started. Um, Portsmouth was the first game, but before that, you'd actually, after the 9-0, you actually had a really good run of form in the December, didn't you? Quite a few wins. I think, yeah, I think that was the, the form that... Um, that helped to, to keep us up 
um, you know, it, it knocked us the nine nil. You can't, no, no player could say that it didn't. It did. It rocked us a little bit, and um, self belief went. We were not cocky. That's not the right word, but you know, we got we got promotion. We thought, you know, we'll give people a run for the money, and we'll we're fit. We, you know, we're aggressive. We're, you know, we had good players in all areas of the pitch, but I mean, we got hammered. We got hammered, and it took a little bit away from us, and t- took us a little bit of time to recover. Um, got a bit edgy. Um, and then, you know, we went from kind of not, not being too overcommittal to when we got back to that semi-final. You just look at, you freeze the frame in certain stages of that game, Chris. After a half time, you're what, depending on the 16 seconds. And we've got like six or seven players in their box. I mean, I'm not sure that was the manager's instructions at half time. I think it was to keep it tight, that we will st- we'll get set pieces, we can still disrupt them, we can still get a goal. One goal puts us back in it. And then we go gun ho. And when Pemba puts that cross, and if you look, there's, you know, Solarco's in there, Fizz is in there, Andy's in, Jeff, um, you know, Pemba puts the cross in, and me, just like six, seven players in, in their penalty, like straight after half time. I mean, Bruce Groblock catches that, throws it down the pitch. <laughs> we should be two down. So, yeah, it was, um, yeah, so we believed in ourselves. Yeah, we, we kind of, um, I think Gary O'Reilly always used that phrase that it was the day the team was born. When we lost 9-0, you know, um, we had to have a good look at ourselves and we did. Uh, we got edgy, we got nervous in games, but, you know, we pulled through and that's what you do. You know, you recover when people get beat. You know, I think Southampton got beat eight, was it eight or nine? And yeah. uh, and you, you just know that you, they're, they're footballs, you pull through, you have to. You've got to stand up to it. You've got to, you know, you know, this is what, you, dust yourself down and go again. You always have to do that in football unless you're playing for one of the big teams where you win more than you lose. <laughs> Fair to say, like you got. A, I was looking at the the earlier rounds. You got a, a pretty good draw, didn't you? Yeah, favourable draw. Yeah. <laughs> so Portsmouth Division Two, Huddersfield Division Three, yeah. Rochdale Division Four, yeah. and Cambridge Division Three. I, I missed the Cambridge game. The Cambridge game was a really strange one because I got sent off. I think I got sent off. Might have been my Sheffield Wednesday or something, and I couldn't believe it. The timing of it was terrible, and I'd, I'd had a bit of an hamstring injury, so. Um, the club let me go away um, and obviously we were sponsored by Virgin so um, a girl called Jane Fella she got me some flights and went to Miami and I'd stay, uh, I'd stay in Fort Lauderdale, Miami and ended up doing a bit of jogging with Nigel Ben who was out there training at the time and um, I remember being down on the beach and then looking at the time thinking oh, the game will have kicked off now and then going back up the stairs to the room and obviously there's no mobiles then and I'm phoning Wrighty's mum and uh, the phone rings and she picks up and I goes, I goes, Mom, it's, it's, it's Mark, what was the score? She goes, where are you? I said, what was the score? She goes, where are you? I said, I- I'm in America. What are you doing there? What was the score? She goes, what are you doing in America? I said, I'm, j- I'm just taking a quick break. What was the score, Mama? She goes, we won. Jeff Thomas scored. I honestly dropped the phone, jumped up and down on the bed, like virtually did a somersault, picked up the phone, but I think she'd put it down there and put it down. I just didn't know what to do. I went to the balcony and I came back in the room and, I wanted to come home and it was, oh my God, this is, you know, this is it. Semi-final, I, I'll, I'll be back. So I missed, yeah, I missed that one. Um, is it, yeah, it was, I, I kind of thought if we go out to this and I've missed the game, I'll oh, never forgive myself. But these things happen in football. So yeah, so I was jumping, I was bouncing off the walls virtually. So that was, how, so how exciting was that? Is that when it really, was there a big excitement before the Cambridge quarterfinal? Because the FA Cup was massive, wasn't it? Oh, you can't, um, you can't get to the final without playing somebody, Chris. That's what I think we thought. You know, cool, the draw's been a bit lucky. Oh, the draw's been a bit lucky. Oh, you know, and then next thing you know, you're in the semi. Now you know you've got to meet some, you know you, it's going to be difficult. And when it was Liverpool, we kind of, I think we all went, okay, right. <laughs> All right, okay, yeah, well, no, so what? It's one game, it's one off, yeah, and kind of talked ourselves around. Um, but then, obviously, right, he was injured, which is your best player is not going to play because it's a broken leg. Um, you know, but anyway, we, 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 we worked it out and Steve had a plan. Um, you know, we, we packed the midfield, one up top, and the boys at the back went man for man. Um, and just watching that game there, you think, I think Peter Beasley got past Richard Shaw once in the whole mm. of the game, plus the, plus the time added on. I think he got past him, actually got past him and produced a cross once, which didn't lead to a goal. And the boys did ever so well. At the back, everybody, Thorny, you know, uh, Gary O'Reilly, 
Richard, and then obviously we, you know, Pembo did what he did. He's, you know, big heart. Um, Fizzer Barber just was Fizzer Barber, just chips away, just tips away, keeps going, keeps going. Andy and Jeff thought were excellent, you know, and I was just isolated. I hardly had a kick really in the first half. I, got, I think four or five touches, but um, yeah, believed that you just believed in each other. I suppose you look in the change room, you think we've got to play our absolute best and we've got to stop them playing at their best. That's the that's the equation to come out of that with a victory. We've got to play, everybody, everyone on our team's got to max out, they've got to play their best and we've got to stop them, you know, and, and Nigel pulls off a couple of great saves at the end. So for the people who were in the stadium, it was, I think it was disbelief. I think my, my sister and brother were, and my brother always got edgy towards the end of the games the crowds and everything so he made my sister leave and so she they ended up watching it <laughs> extra time in a pub in uh, in birmingham so near to the car where they parked it so she was a bit annoyed at that but anyway yeah it was um it was just a magical day you know from, from everything seemed to fall into place from start to finish you know um, and apart from some of the fans getting caught in the traffic on the motorway and then you come out and you think oh why is it what's well, empty seats empty seats in the semi-final what's that about and I think you always have a fondness for that, that stadium. Whenever I go back there, I know you just, there's something about that stadium. You know, Villa Park, it just, I think it's etched in, in all our memories, really, that, that how, what a massive achievement it was for us. So, yeah, just, you know, just a reminder, 30 years on, you know, how great the day was. And we've had great days since, and we'll have great days again. You mentioned the game plan, the formation. The so the John Motson and Terry Venables had no idea how you were going to line up until they had a look at it. How much time did you actually get to work on that? Because since the, I guess that a plan would have started to form as soon as you drew Liverpool, right? But you're still playing league games in between that. So did you did you only work on the plan in the in the week leading up to the game? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it was Steve's just said right. This is this is how we're going to play. Bright's going to play up top on his own. We're going to pack the midfield. We're going to go man to man at the back. Um, everyone's going to have a man to mark. Just follow that man wherever he goes. And I mean, you you can work on it a little bit, but not that not too much. Um, you know roughly who you've got fit. Some people might be the last minute. Um, as you can see, there's only two people on the bench. It was Rudy and, uh, and Dave Madden. Um, and you you just have to buy into it, you know. But well, most important player without question really I think was Andy with his delivery Andy Gray so mm. you know he on his day I mean you know you, can't, you don't exaggerate he's as good as anybody he's as good as Beckham you know he could deliver that ball he could whip it in he could he could float it in he could just dink it over the, the top to the defence for it to sit up and there's nothing he couldn't do and then you know he just showed his, uh, his adaptability and he just he's playing in midfield he's tracking and then he's joining his closest one to me and he plays a little bit more up top in the in the, in the second half and gets closer to me. And he can hold it up, he can run channels, he can play wide, he can play up top, and he can play in the centre midfield with Jeff as a pair. So, you know, there wasn't, you know, and then obviously um, Al at parts, he, you know, his contribution as well in breaking things, obviously gave the ball away for the first goal, which, you know, that was him. Um, I'm sure I didn't let it affect his confidence. Oh, yeah, obviously. It's not possible, is it? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but no, no, listen. Um, just the magic of the day, and the, the, you know the, the the FA Cup means a bit to me, Chris, because I grew up with it. There was there wasn't much live football on the TV. You get the 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 old Champions League trophy, the European Cup, as we called it, and the FA Cup. And the FA Cup, as I always said, it felt felt tangible. It felt like you could get there. You could have a lucky run, you know, and you could get there. And this is something that's it's possible for me to win in my career. And I always looked at that as the FA Cup is the be-all and end-all. Because you've got to be international football to go to the Euros or to the World Cup and, and play in the magic of those stadiums and arenas. But for the FA Cup, the, the, you could be lucky one season and get there. You know, and obviously, I've been very fortunate. You've been, been twice and both went to replays. So you walk mm -hmm. out of four FA Cup finals. So, you know, when 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 that the Cambridge game, you know, when, when they won that, it was... I was relieved, but... I was more excited at the next level, the FA Cup semi-final. And I don't care who we draw, we'll give it everything we've got. And I think, I just echo the, the, the sentiment and the attitude of the rest of the team. It's not something you say to each other, it's just something that happens and evolves. When you get a good group, like, you know, when we when we got promotion 
um, you know, 2.13, we got promotion. You just look at the group and you see Mele and everybody and Punch and, and Wilf and you just think, you know what, we've got a good group here. You can feel it. The fans feel it, I think, like anything else. Sometimes you feel that, you know, you'd be in trouble this game. You, you know, you, you start it, but then you believe in the team and think that they can come through. So we had a strong belief in each other. We had characters um, who were very strong mentally, the team. And um, and we had, you know, five of the team ended up playing for England. So, you know, we had, mm. you know, ability as well. So we had a mix of everything. We could mix it with people. We weren't frightened, we weren't intimidated. No one could intimidate us, you know, not like the old Wimbledon Eve. We used to have it with them all the time. Um, as you saw, it took a lot to get booked. <laughs> you saw that <laughs> challenge Andy Thorne did. Was it on McMahon? I mean, yeah. <laughs> and George Corney didn't even book him. So, all, and you saw everybody as well. Everyone gets up and gets on with it. Little tap on the shot. Yeah, okay, no worries. Get, I owe you one. And the physio came on. Well, their physio came on once for Ian Rush in the first half. It ended up coming off. And then the physio came on, was it for Pembo? Might have come on for Pembo later in the game. Mm, yeah, and he did, went, yeah. And I think that was it. You know, in a game of that, and, and no one's lying down, rolling over and acting and, you know, virtually. I think I, I remember running and putting my foot on the ball in the corner. I think that was the only time anybody did it, right at the end of the game. So, um, yeah, we had a lot of a strong belief in each other. And I don't know, it, it can't explain the feeling coming off the pitch, just going up the stairs, going into the change room where you kind of, everyone else had gone back to, and then just hugging everybody. And Steve Koppel, maybe one of three times in, in all the time I was at Crystal Palace, tapping me, saying, I thought you were excellent today. And that was probably the best it could get for me, for, for, for him to say that. He just rarely did, he just he didn't shower that much praise on people, not in a, in a bad way, but just that you know if he says something to you, you must have done well. Because it, it was, um, you know, it's not easy to please, Steve, but if you carried out the game plan, you did everything he asked you to do and you lost, then he'd hold his hands up and say, I, I think I got it wrong. But when he came, he just tapped said, thought you were excellent today, well done. D you deserved your goal and everything. And just as a team, the chairman come in, Ron, who's obviously passed now, and we all threw him in the bath. And it was just one of those, it's, it's, it's um, no doubt the boys from 2016, they felt the same. It's just the moment you know, well, the moment you achieve getting into the FA Cup final, and you just know that, you know, your fans are going to enjoy it more because they don't take those things for granted. That, that you know, this will be the first time I've been there in the history and... You know, can you, and then you, you, your thoughts turn to right. Got some games in between. Don't want to get injured. That's the the overriding thing. No one wants yeah. to get injured before the final. So um, yeah, so it's, it's nothing that anyone else hasn't felt. Chris, who's been in the FA Cup, any team, any player who will tell you it's okay for the big teams because they've got they, you know they they want to bigger and better things in European football, Champions League, Europa League, etc. But domestically, to me, it's 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 magical. And still remains the same because I like I like seeing the non-league teams give the the league teams a run for the money. And you didn't look that knackered at the end there. I was reading um, an article by Richard Foster in the Guardian um, of when it was the anniversary of the game, and he said about um, Alan Smith taking you on hill runs up yeah. uh, farming downs. Well, what were they like? They, we used to do that sort of Monday or Tuesday, which is ridiculous now because it's like second day recovery. Um, so. We'd play hard on the Saturday and then you'd go to bed early on the Sunday, knowing Monday that you were going to go in, get in the minibus, go to Falling Downs just in Surrey. And there was just these, the, the army used to run up these hills as well with, with rucksacks on. And, you know, we used to have to go there and get in groups of three or four and, and go up this really steep hill. And Taff would be at the top, you know, that's one. And then you'd go, if you go back down and, and we do all this running and everybody did it. So in our team, we were mobile. We were, you know, we could get about the pitch, we were strong, we, and then add to that the, the mental toughness that we, we came out with some of the defeats and everything, and they're sticking together. And we put demands on each other as well. I think, you know, the, the rumours were, you know, that, that you know, we used to kill each other in the change room and all that sort of thing, but we put demands on each other. I think looking back, everybody realised it was it was for the good of, of the team, for the club, for the fans to win, you know, to everyone to produce their best. So the running was a big part of it. If you came to the club and you were you weren't a very good runner, <laughs> you're in trouble. Um, because we just ran, we ran a lot. And um, when we were getting beat seven 0 I think it was McMahon or um, Ronnie Wheel and said to Jeff Thomas, when we were getting beat nine, we were up there in the league game. I can't remember how many goals we had scored. And he said to Jeff, "Can I ask you a serious question?" And Jeff went, "Yeah." He goes, "Do you train with the ball or do you just run?" 
<laughs> Jeff told us afterwards in the bathroom. I mean, it's one of those laughs where you, it's a nervous laugh, like you've just been beat. You know, everyone's like looking around the room, just you got your heads down, and and then you saw that half half laugh, and you feel bad for laughing because you just got absolutely hammered. But yeah, it's a um, big part of it was fitness. You know, we were we were younger, we were younger, and Steve, I, th I think in the extra time, said, you know, this is your time. You're younger, you're hungrier. They've done it all before. They've been there. They've seen it. They've done it. This is your time. Take, you know, you, you've got to go and take it. Take your opportunity. Um, nobody went down with cramp. The pitch was hard and bony, as you could see, dry. Um, yeah, nobody went down with cramp. It, we were robust. We were a robust team. You know, it's um, times were different. Um, the boys are bigger now. They're bigger. They're they they're, they're more conditioned. Definitely, you know, better physical specimens. But our boys are just robust. You got up and got on with it and got out there each week and played. And you know, the pitches weren't as good. Surfaces are excellent now. Everything's superb. So it's a testament. I don't think any, anyone got cramp on either side. Um, you know, especially an extra time, which is definitely. But you, are you, from from the moment Andy headed that ball in, uh, Pards headed the ball in. I think then you just you, you you've, you're floating in this 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 place where you just want the referee keep looking at George Courtney saying, blow that whistle, blow the whistle. Because you know Liverpool don't give up anything easily, and they they hung in that game. They came they went ahead. They came from behind, and you just know that you know that they, they in any given time they can. Now, Nigel pulls off an excellent. I think it's a header from John Barnes. Is it right at the end? So um, fitness was a huge thing, and um, we believed in it, and we believed in ourselves. That, you know, we were the fittest. We th we thought we felt we're probably the fittest team in the league. Yeah, so fitness was a thing. Maybe not not so much nutrition the day before. I remember in 2016, Pards made them have fish and chips on the Friday before every game. That was yeah. a throwback to 1990, wasn't it? That was that. Yeah, that was the the fish and chips. Like, the, right, we'll start something new. You know, how someone who eats it. Right, for this for this cup run, this is the third round. I'm gonna wear this t-shirt. I'm gonna wear this top. I'm gonna wear this tie. Whatever you do, if you're super superstitious. And I think it was like fish and chips on Friday, and he carried it on when we got to the uh, um, final in 2016. And it's just one of those things that I think, if you believe it, you just believe in it. Stick with it. Stick with it. Um, nutrition wasn't that big in those days, and no. Uh, you know, I don't pat myself on the back. I kind of, I'd read a few articles and I'd read Sports Illustrated and I'd seen what athletes were doing and, you know, pasta and, and carbohydrates Thursdays and Fridays before the game. And then, you know, protein straight after as well to repair the <coughs> damage and things. So I started doing that quite early in my career and, you know, being teetotal during the season and things like that. So kind of that started to move through football and people became more professional. But you think that in our day that that you know that Liverpool team, there's some drinkers in that team, and I think the Arsenal team is well, well documented. Some drinkers in there, so it's hard to think you can perform at the highest level and win the top trophies when you know alcohol plays a strong part in your team spirit and bonding. Mm. But they were different times, different eras. Now, two things stood out for me as um, as you walked out onto that pitch when I was watching it earlier. First of all, shell suits. Absolutely incredible shell suits from Palace. And the Liverpool gear wasn't bad either. And also the short shorts. shorts. Have you got any of those shorts still? And do you ever try them on? No. Um, you, you end up giving everything away, Chris. You know, because of that semi-final where we were posting stuff on social media, a guy sent me a message and he just said, I managed to catch this when you threw it in the crowd, Mark. And it's the shirt. My shirt. Oh, I had on. And, I, and uh, he showed me a picture of it and, and I said to him, do you want to sell it back to me? Because obviously I'd love to have it. And he said, oh, I want to keep it, Mark. He said, if I do decide to sell it, I'll, I'll, you'll be the first person. So you end up giving them away or throwing them in the crowd or selling them for good causes, you know, um, sorry, auctioning them for good causes. Um, and so you end up giving everything away. And obviously the, the, from the final, um, the two shirts, the, the yellow and black one, it's another story. And um, and the original one, um, I gave to Steve Parrish for his fiftieth, and he's um, I had them framed and he's, he's put it in the boardroom. So you know they, they they were the kind of two I had. I've got one I've got one from Sheffield Wednesday. I've got a couple of others and one one Palace one number nine on it. It's got no nothing on it. So I'm just assuming it was just the top I saved. 
because usually you gave it to your sponsor as well. You signed your shirt again to the sponsor. So it's kind of not. You didn't. No one collected shirts in those days. I don't think. Maybe maybe a few did, but um, yeah. So the, the shorts. I did. I did have some of the shorts, and I think I just. I think I ended up giving them away. But um, everything I've got is in one plastic bag, and it's like a handful of shirts. That's it. Wow. Now, going back to the game, um, obviously, Rush scored, um, but then he went off with an injury. What were you thinking then? I suppose you, you kind of think, oh, Rush has gone off, but then you've got John Barnes and yeah. Beardsley up front yeah. still, and Barnes was incredible. Yeah, John Barnes is a phenomenal player. What he's what he's done for, for, for Liverpool Football Club, what he did for, for English football, um, you know, high, I hold him in high regard, you know, he's a fantastic person as well. Um, but well, they played a similar system to They played Rushy and then they played like Beasley, Barn, something, then McMahon and um, uh, Whelan. Um, I think Gary Gillespie played right back. Was it Burroughs left? Hussein and Hansen. So, you know, they had a similar set of trust with Rush on his own up top. I think Peter Beasley was kind of like the closest to him. So you, you do, you, I wouldn't say you celebrate somebody going off, but people like Rush didn't go off very often. It was a rib injury. I remember John Motson saying, <clears throat> I didn't know what it was until. I just heard that it was a rib injury went off with. Now, it must be something serious for him to go off because mm. you know, usually when he scored, they won. It was that kind of combination. So there's small things where you say, oh, OK, he's gone off. But like you say, Peter Beasley and John Barnes could cause any any defence trouble. So it wasn't one of those things where you celebrated, but you kind of thought, OK, well, that's gone in our favour a little bit. But there's just so much work to do. There's so much work we... I wouldn't say uh, the first 45 minutes we were a little bit I mean we we didn't feel we had a go I didn't feel I had a kick I didn't feel I was in the game I was just trying to press the ball and when it was being hooked down the line I was trying to hold it and get some free kicks and couple said don't, don't, doesn't matter don't worry they're Liverpool they have to play a certain way they will still try and play football that's where we can try and pinch try and pinch you try and force free kicks try and get some corners and set pieces that's going to be our strength and that's where we can expose them so we've had some questions from fans um, about the game as it went on. So a guy called Harrit, uh, no, earlier in this, Telstar said, what on earth was said at half-time, especially to trigger Pembo to make that crazy run? It made me throw my half-time sandwiches as Brighty scored. So what? How, how did Pembo go on that run? Were, were you told to attack them from the off? If you see what happens, I think Steve McMahon passes the ball behind, behind Beasley something and Pembo just spots it's a bad pass. And he runs forward, and as he runs forward, he just takes the ball in, in his in his stride. And then when he takes the ball in his stride on the first touch, his next touch was a big one to obviously try and you know get a throw a throw in or something. And he just goes past two players, and obviously there, and everyone sees the opportunity, and off we go. You know when you know you've got Jeff, Andy, and Andy Gray, Solarco, and Phil Barber, and me. Somehow we end, all end up in the box. You know, Pembo's just on the edge of the box, crossing it. And then it's a, you know, Fizzer goes for it. Solarco hits it. Groblos saves it with, I think, his leg. Ricochets to me. I I hit it. And I think that Mom just deflects it into the into the, to the corner. So you can imagine that it's the first touch you have in the, in the, in the, in the second half. And it's in the back of the net. And you're level. You're in the game. You're back in the game. And, you know, we, we, we didn't speak about scoring straight away. Or it, we just talked about couple saying keep your shape keep your discipline you know one goal we're always in the game always um and just choose the opportunities when to get when to try and join me and get up close to me and mark you've got to try and back in and get some fouls off hands and that so we can then implement our plan of, of using the set pieces to our strengths but the was was incredible i mean even just watching it there and you know what's you know what's going to happen obviously you're watching mm. and Pembo goes down there and he just delivers a great ball fizzer challenges for it Slocko slams it, and then it comes to me. And, it, and as you score, you, the, the goose pimples come up on my arm, and all your hair stands on it. And you're thinking, I mean, I've seen that goal hundreds of times, but just in that moment, watching the entirety of the game and everything, it just all brings it back to, to brings it back to life, really, for it for us. About 15 minutes after that, it was you running down the right wing. Yeah. Um, you got a cross in for was it? Uh, did Andy Gray get the? Final yeah, Jeff was behind him, I think, and it goes straight into Groblar's arms, doesn't it? He, I think he caught, kind of dives on it on the line. Um, yeah, it was it was fleeting moments, really. It's just um, 
you know, it was, it was all down to set pieces, really. You know, Thorny with the flick on or the touch or Gary O'Reilly coming in there and just try and cause a bit of chaos. But one thing I did notice is the marking's very slack from Liverpool. There's nobody touch tight. There's no one grabbing your shirt. You know, they drop into they two or three yards. And if that ball's good, you know, two or three yards is not tight enough to just to allow someone to flick it. So the marking's a lot tighter now, nowadays. And Harry says, in the latter stages, so I'm guessing extra time, were the strategies and game plans coming from Koppel or Jeff? <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Everything came from Koppel. Yeah. Um, you, you have to take responsibility on the pitch and the, and, the, um, and the skipper used to take responsibility on the pitch and demand a bit more of everybody because his job, you know, and I need more from you to up front. We need more. You know, Andy, we need more, you know, and leave, and leave South as well. You know, we're always led by example, Jeff. Um, was he adjusted anything tactically at all? Not at all. They just picked their moments. I mean, Andy and Jeff were both two players who could get in the box and get a goal or sit back and defend. They didn't have, you know, like we look at Luca as our like holding midfield player who gets you off the defence and starts things off. Andy and Jeff didn't have those roles. They both could sit back and they could both go forward. They could both tackle, you know, they could both score goals and get in the box. So, you know, if you saw an opportunity, you used to seize that opportunity and get forward. It wasn't like one of them went and one of them held. Sometimes both of them were in the box. And that's seen now as undisciplined, you know, you're leaving the, the team sort of like open to counter. Um, but you no, know, Steve Koppel put, called all the shots. You know, Steve, Alan Smith was there, Ian Bramford was there. Um, you know, you'd usually hear somebody from the side shout something, let him have it, let him have it go over the other side, you know, show him down one side, show him down the left side if they've got a right footed left back playing so he can't deliver a good ball, all those little things that they do nowadays. How come Steve Koppel ran straight down the tunnel afterwards? Left left the, the glory side to the players. They'd earned the right to run around the pitch and throw the shirts in the crowd and celebrate. He kind of, um, his job was done. He was just off he went. Strange one, actually. Just, you know, until you see it on the TV, you know, just what happens is you can understand, I can understand, totally understand it. The fans piling onto the pitch and it just robs you that moment of kind of walking around together and clapping the fans because everybody's on the pitch. It's all chaos and confusion. Students are trying to get people off. Their team, they've just seen their team beat Liverpool in the FA Cup semi final. I can understand it. I'm not saying it's right. I can understand it. And, um, you know, people are grabbing it, you're trying to grab your shirt or something off you, a memento, and you're trying to sort of like, where are the other players? And people have gone off and and then, you know, you go up to the changing room and it's just pandemonium, people jumping around. And then I think, I think John Barnes came in and I think McMahon or Whelan, it's tradition, the, the you know, the captain usually from the opponent team comes in, congratulations and wishes you all the best in the final. Um, and, um, you know, when, when I've been involved in it, that's what's happened. Players have come in and wish you all the best. I remember Barnsley coming in definitely, saying you deserved it, thought you played well, well done, good luck in the final, shake people's hand and go, go out. And um, it's the first time you've kind of like think, wow, that's strong, you know, I'm not sure I'd go in there. But then, you know, a couple of whatever says, you know, it's tradition, that's what you do. Wish them all the best, you know. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure it still happens. I would have to ask one of the boys who played in the final, but... Yeah, you, you, you're looking around the change room and shaking your head, champagnes flying around all over the place. And you just, you know, you're just going over and sitting with someone and hugging them and then going to someone else. And it's, um, it's hard to explain. I think, you know, it, it would be a, a very good thing for the cameras to catch and show, you know, that camaraderie. You see it now a little bit more because of social media, of big games when play, players win, just what it's like in the change room. You know, the bonds mm. that you, you form, I think that, you know, if you, if, we, if you meet any of that team now, you know, you always just hug each other and say, how are you doing? And, you know, you do, you do form bonds, there's no question about it. And you had some red and blue donuts I was reading about. And did you lob them at fans on the way back? Right, so we, we came back, we get, right, me came back um, um, separately in a car because, um, you know, Mitchell Thomas had come up, um, he was at Spurs at the time and, um, was with Stuart Day and Stuart was like the uh, one of the top guys at the Mercedes at the time and he came up to watch us play and he was going to try and take us back and get us back quicker and we just got stuck in this traffic heading from from Birmingham down to London it was just chocker and we had bottles of champagne out the sunroof people fans were coming up <laughs> running and getting the bottles off us and I mean I think 
I think Cobble said they were throwing donuts from the coach. Um, it was just chaos. It was just chaos because you, you're trickling along, then it come to a standstill, then fancy get out of their cars, run and bang on the windows. And, you know, I suppose it's an early kickoff and you're heading back down. You don't care about Oldham and Manchester United. You, you've just beaten Liverpool and you're in the final. So it took us ages to get back. It was just all this traffic, everyone just leaving at the same time. Um, but yeah, great memories, signing things, signing shirts, signing tops, signing programmes. Um, fans running from one car to the other, taking pictures with <laughs> wind up cameras. Uh, it was, um, yeah, the great, great memories. And I mean, editing, you know, you don't know where the, the thing is that somebody will say to you, enjoy this because you don't know when it'll happen again. Now, if you're at a big club, you are going to the FA Cup final more often than anybody else. You're getting the Champions League. You, you know, you're going to play in these great games. But for anybody else, you just don't know. You really don't know. The next year you could be injured. The next year you could get knocked out in the third round. That's how it is. So you do have to enjoy it. But the third, that first one, that one that is just I don't know you're floating you're coming back down that you're just floating and you know any, anyone who's ever met you or knows you have your phone rings for days or voice messages in the old days the, the voice mm -hmm. on your telephone <clears throat> yeah it's um an interview request as well you know and and uh, and Eric Hall who was the um <laughs> he was like the what did we have we had a players pool and Eric Hall was an agent at, he was an agent at the time and he was like a showbiz agent, really. Was the funniest guy. The funniest guy. He kept every, kept the atmosphere, and the spirit, and the, everything going. Brilliant. I mean, we had a we had a sponsorship deal for umbrellas, and we're like, Eric, what are we gonna do? Yeah, just walk around with them. Just walk up. Just put them up. <laughs> just off your head. But yeah. <laughs> Actually, talking about that, that brings me on to our questions from fans. Talking of sponsorship deals, so yeah. we'll finish off. We've got about five or six questions from fans. So. Uh, James, I think you saw this on Twitter. He said, do you still wear arrow boots? And he had a picture of the advert for it. Obviously, I mean, you, you don't play much, but if you, yeah, when did you last wear arrow boots? I, I, so the, 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 the deal was um, High Tech wanted all of us to wear the same boots, be the first team in the final to wear the same boots, and they were willing to put quite a bit of money into the players' pool. I had a separate deal, an individual deal, with a, a small company called Arrow. They had David Platt, the two Wallace brothers, myself i think i might be one other player and it was their, their first season and i think david platt had won for england the Wallace brothers were um, involved uh, danny was involved with man united who also got to the final i think so mm -hmm. they kind of got really good exposure and they were panicking because they knew that high tech were all over the team so i mean it's obviously it's, it's common knowledge now that they came to collect all the boots they took the boots away they black out the boots the stripes were on and then they put the arrow over the top black out the soles and then they kept it because steve Cobble said there's no way you lot are having new boots for the final no you're not having new boots you're not you've got to have the boots you've been wearing you, they, they, you'll get blisters it'll be chaos so they just blacked out their boots and put the, the, the thing on top and i just said no i'm staying loyal to the to the, the small company who, who, who kind of give me a little bit of money to to as a boot sponsor so I wore Arrow, which is what I was contracted to do, and I was proud, I was proud and pleased to do it. So um, yeah, so they were they, they, uh, they went under actually, not for anything to do with me, but yeah, <laughs> they, were, they were trying. They had uh, they got good exposure. Alf Weller says, "Who's the toughest defender you would say was hard to compete against? So the toughest defender you played against in your they're, career?" They're common questions, and it's a, and and it's a, the answer can be anybody who does what, anybody on their day. You can say that. The toughest I felt to play against were the Arsenal team under George Graham because of the way they played. So you're talking about, you know, Adams, Keown, Bold, Linigan, um, Paul McGrath, Bruce, Pallister, um, Lawrence and Hansen, because they they were quick, they were good on the ball, they were you couldn't get near, you know, you they were so and there'd be any one of number of players from any team, like Killer Kill Klein, used to play for Coventry. Um you can, you can name you can name a player from any team, so they were all difficult. But you know, people like Paul McGraw, were, they were quick. Des Walker, so he's not a dirty player whatsoever, but competed in the air. You knew you weren't beating him for pace. Stood up all the time, never dived in. You know, you know, you, you never had a bad game. He delivered every time. So, but the, the most difficult collectively, the back four and the keeper, that was Arsenal. Play a high line. 
just you know they're good and strong in the air they're physical they're up for the battle all the time um so yeah any any of those boys uh brad campagna did you cry any time i think he's talking about the 99s game but let's just turn everybody. it to when did you cry in your career everybody you do yeah didn't cry the night no we got beat i was in shock um so, cried it for the final that's for sure cool we all were we just sitting there worst feeling come in threw a medal across the room <laughs> slumped in my seat started crying couple comes up put his arm around you we we'll go again next year and christ almighty tears flowing looking around the rooms worst feeling everybody you've just been on this journey with and you've and you do think your name's on the cup you've beaten liverpool i know you played man united in the final but it wasn't the man united like they are under Sir Alex, it was the first trophy they won. So you're thinking, beat Liverpool, the Omens, our names on this cup. Our names on this cup. So, you know, the only thing you ever want is those pictures of you dancing around Wembley with the FA Cup or the lid on your head or whatever, what you dream of. And so to lose it, that's your dream. And that's, you're, never, you're, not, you're not sure you can get back again. So, yeah, we, we, we all bawled our eyes out then, everybody. And then again in, two, in, in 2000, uh, no, no, 1992, 93. FA Cup and the League Cup final, same season, lost them with Sheffield Wednesday. Mm. Yeah, you, yeah, I thought I'd say 99% of players will cry at some stage. Uh, Zach says, what was your favourite goal scored for Palace? Um, scored a, 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 one of a rare one for me outside the box, Millwall. Mm. I think Rice slid it, slid it square to me. Just didn't wasn't wasn't hard enough and I had to wait, just hesitated, waited and then hit it and it went to the top corner. It's one of them training ground goals. It wasn't an Andros goal, but to me it was. Um yeah, I enjoyed that. It was a good goal. Although it did score one at Barnsley, remember I told you? And I, they wouldn't give me the video. They wouldn't give me the video. I hit it with my left foot outside and there's only the chairman from Barnsley Barnsley and myself remember it. I spoke to Ian Evans who was one of the coaches at Palace at the time just a couple of weeks ago and he um and i said taff do you remember that goal I scored it uh Barnsley away left foot no okay probably best goal I, i've tried looking for it as well on because we don't have the video but i've tried even it's even hard on the internet to find the record of games with goal yeah. scoring yeah because uh, yeah i told you you looked for the you looked and said i didn't score didn't you i worked out you, you, said, we you played it away in 89 is, is it was it swansea brighton <laughs> That's what yeah. said. I said, Chris, I know the difference between Swansea and, and, and Barnsley. Well, we played them and we scored on March the 11th, 1989. I know because it's my wife's date of birth, but um, I can't find a match report from that game. So if anyone yeah. watching remembers oh, Brighty they, scoring against Barnsley, uh, yeah, let us know. Fans must have been there. But the, the, the club videoed it themselves, you know, on like a, a, a camcorder. And yeah. I had to write to the club and ask them, oh, could you send me down a copy? I'll pay for it and everything because I just wanted the goal. I said no, which is obviously <laughs> two fingers, isn't it? Sorry, no. <laughs> and no one's ever seen it. Well, we'll try and track that down. Right, that's it. That's what is I actually know. Not a proper chat show host, I should probably say. Uh, Brighty, uh, you've got a book out. Um, you, you can buy that in all good retailers, can you? Come on, you must have a copy to hand. You're not sitting on one. No. They're, they're not. They're not copies, are they? They're, 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 they're false covers. I said you oh, okay. cover, and then you just put them round other books because they're all quite standard. <laughs> uh, um, but you can down for those that um, can't Amazon. doesn't want to get deliveries. You can. It's on Amazon Kindle, is it? I, do you know what? It should be. I think it's going to go paperback soon. If you want to wait, you might save yourself some money. It's a very good read, I'm told. Yeah, I've heard. Oh, sorry, my dog's squeaking. Yeah, he's, he's not agreeing. He's not agreeing. He's no. very good. Anyway, we passed some time. Yes. yes. Well, that was a long one. 45 minutes of Mark Bryant. This is like when you pop down to our <laughs> office when you're supposed to be working. You never get too much of Mark Bryant, Chris. You know that. <laughs> I do. I do. Right. I'm going to... And um, actually, 3-3 three, three final game. If we manage to get hold of the full... 90 minutes of that. You, is that something you'd enjoy watching or would you not enjoy it because because of the well, replay? The no, the 3-3 three, three, United final, 1990. Yeah, 
I've never watched it. Never watched it. Seven minutes away, I think. Mm. It was Mark Hughes. I met him at a party one time, and I said, "You know, you broke our hearts." He went, "Let it go, right? Let it go." Twenty-five <laughs> <laughs> years ago. <laughs> I used to watch that over and over again because I had it recorded off the TV, all the coverage. And not 1990, because I was born 83, so I was nearly seven. But then Italia 90 happened in the summer. And that was when I really got into football. So then as soon as that finished, my dad was like, well, I've got the tape of the FA Cup final. And I used to watch it every day. It was a great little period that, Chris, because you had... In April, you had the two semi-finals live, mm. like you as well, two great games. Then you had the final, which went to a replay. The 3-3 was phenomenal. The replay was obviously lost. And then you had Italian 90 straight after. Mm. And it was like a great moment of a few months of, you know, just drama in football. I mean, the I watched that Paul Gascoigne documentary yesterday. I didn't realise it's been around. I saw it on Netflix. It's excellent. If anyone hasn't seen it, just just shows you how good he was, how great he was. Um, yeah, so it was a really great period of football. It kind of, I read one article that said it kind of helped to bring football back, you know, into the into the, the popular sort of area again because of the the hooliganism and everything that followed football in those like late late seventies, mid eighties. It was terrible, you know, violence at games and fighting and th- breaking windows and all those sort of things. And it all sort of died out, and people got back and fell back in love with it. And you know, the, the Premier League, the introduction of the Premier League has been for me sensational you know with the stadiums and everybody's benefited from it the, the money we've had some great players here and it's great to be a part of it still it's fantastic so anyway is me yeah. having on Chris well yeah but people are asking me now on here if I can ask you about Sheffield Wednesday I'm not going to ask you about Sheffield Wednesday you can go on one of their fan things and be a legend yeah. over there yeah. thank you for thank you for joining us um I'm sure we'll be in touch soon. Probably got another pub yeah. quiz coming up, so I'll be back in you in Brighty's bar. Yeah, of course. Have a good day, everybody. Rest of your weekend. Yeah, see you guys.